Hello, hello, and welcome back. Today we are watching our very first Chuck Norris movie on this channel. Requested by a few of you, and I was very happy to indulge because we are going to watch the 1980 film, The Octagon. So get out your headbands, slap on your tough guy stares, and get ready for some echoey thoughts because this is Red Eye Reviews. So first things first, I wanted to let you all know about an update to the channel. Now that the world is slowly returning to normal, I have several things that will start to take up some of my schedule. So due to these changes, it just isn't really realistic for me to continue producing three videos a week and keep the quality at the level that I want it to be. So because of this, I will be reducing my videos per week down to two one on Saturday and one on Wednesday. Nothing else about the channel or the videos will change beyond that. And who knows, maybe one day if this channel grows and actually becomes any source of income or anything, I might actually be able to allocate more time back to creating. But for now, this will kind of help me get some of my time back so I can focus on other hobbies and activities. Okay, enough life talk. We are here to watch Chuck Norris roundhouse kick some jerks in the face. So let's get to it. We start right off with some echoing voices. Does it A rather creepy way to start this movie, but, you know, don't worry, we never hear these echoes again. Oh, actually, no, I meant to say that we hear these echoes in almost every single scene in the movie. We go to a terrorist training camp. The head instructor, Katsumoto, tells the class that they have graduated, but if they do anything to expose the group or cause them any sort of harm, them and their families will be killed. Also, I think that's the super ninja right there, and he looks awesome. I hope he's a good fighter. We then get to see that terrorist group in action as they kill the diplomat. And there's so many twists and turns here. It's not two ladies. There is no baby. That lady's a man. That ain't no woman. It's a man, man. There is so much to unpack here, but the plan does go off and one of them gets killed. We then meet Scott James, a.k.a. Chuck, I will punch your chest through your back, Norris. And he is a retired karate champion who is at a dance performance. That's the kind of girl I'd like to settle down with. Pretty, but not too pretty. Good body, nice smile. Oh yeah, I forgot this movie's in 1980. Things, things are a little different back then. You're right about the smile. I'll let you know about the rest later. Oh, Chuck, you devil-tongued bastard. That was smooth as hell. So Chuck goes on a date with his lady from the performance, and she kind of seems pretty distant throughout the dinner, and uh, for good reason, because when the two head back to her place, there's someone more here. I feel I feel it. Echoey thoughts. By the way, this is how they decided Chuck Norris would think inside his own head. It's not like him to cover up. Why would he tell me? And I can't tell what is more insulting. The fact that his thoughts echo, meaning there's like a lot of empty space in his head, or the fact that he feels the need to whisper to himself in his own thoughts, as if like, if he's too loud, somebody could hear them. But we move past it because they get attacked by Ninja. He does beat them all up, but Nancy gets killed. Scott then turns the power back on and discovers that the entire family has actually been killed. Oh my god. Ninja. 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 The next day, Scott goes to talk to an old mercenary friend to see if he knows anything about these ninja. And he's like, ninja? Mm, nope, never heard of them before. Don't know what you're talking about. We also see Ernie Hudson. And that's it. I was really, <laughs> I was really excited. I thought he'd be more in the movie, but he's not. That's all we get. I will go watch Ghostbusters immediately after making this video, though. So on his way back from that meeting, he runs into a lady named Justine, who has managed to get her car stuck on the side of the road. Uh, incidentally, wouldn't it be a lot safer if you drove my car and I drove yours? Well, you're a stranger. I'd be a bloody fool to think of you before myself. Okay, how does that make any sense? Also, lady, you were driving his car like it's a rental car right now? And according to Top Gear, the fastest car in the world is a rental car with insurance, and they are correct. But still show that car some respect, please. And this lady is a total jerk, because after he helps her, she tells him her address and then takes his keys. Oops, I didn't mean to. And like forces him to walk all the way back to her place. 
Once there, we see just how loaded this lady is. She gives him back the keys and claims it was a total accident, but I'll drive you back to your car now. And he's like, mm, no, I'm going to drive because you're evil and pretty manipulative. But on the way back, they get chased by two cars. <laughs> And if video games have taught me anything, it's that cutting these corners is actually slower than you think, yeah. Unless it's Mario Kart and then it's game on. But they do escape and Justine says one of those cars kind of look like her bodyguard's car. Scott asks her out to dinner, but first he goes to check on his old mercenary friend and notices that that car is actually there. So Scott confronts Justine and she confesses that she hired McCarn, that mercenary guy, to be her bodyguard. She also then goes out on a limb and just asks him to kill somebody for her. It's a bold strategy. I have the most confident looking cheekbones. And that is an odd boast, but whatever, it's 1980. That could be a normal thing to say. She then says her father was killed by the terrorist group and that she has vowed revenge and will do whatever it takes to get what she wants. Wink, wink. You know, whatever it takes. That's an insult to both of us. It makes me stupid. And you a whore. I'm glad you're glad. And goodbye. Damn, Chuck, that is cold. I keep forgetting this is the 80s. I was not alive yet, so I'm going to take this at face value. I believe now this is how everybody talked back then. Scott's friend AJ is also growing sick of the terrorists, and he decides he's going to go fight them and signs up with the mercenary guy McCarn to help out their cause. Scott then kind of realizes that maybe AJ and McCarn are right and that these terrorists need to be eliminated, so he looks for an ad in the paper. Yeah, that's right. There is a mercenary ad in the paper. And do you want to know what kind of man takes out an ad like this? You Beatty? Mr. Beatty. Give him a chair. Let him sit. Yeah, that's the exact kind of person I would expect to do that. We then get a flashback to Scott when he was younger, and we learn that the leader of the terrorist training camp, Sakura, is his half-brother. Dun-dun-dun! Also, fun fact, younger version of Chuck Norris here is played by his real-life son, Mike Norris. Yeah, it just looks like a mini version of him. Like somebody 3D printed a Chuck Norris. Afterwards, Scott goes to the mercenary training camp and asks if he can get an assignment near the ninja camp. And they're like, ninja? Nah, never heard of them before. Don't know what you're talking about. He then, to like prove that he's strong, he kind of fights a bunch of the people in the room. Oh, shit! Gonna try again? What? And dude, Chuck Norris is a legitimate badass. Like, I have always known that he is a good martial artist, but I've never really, like, seen enough of his movies to see it in action. But damn, Chuck, this is a real treat compared to what, you know, I normally watch on this channel. Like, look at him here in this scene punching this bag. Could I do it again? Could I bite you now? God damn, that dude is strong. We will move on, but that is a breath of fresh air from my other movies. Scott then meets Aura, who is a lady that ran away from the ninja camp, and she says she can get Scott into the camp. I can't tell you how to get there, but... Why not? You train there. I know that I train there. It's just that it's, it's a little bit more complicated than that. We think. It, it doesn't sound like she knows how to get there, but, I mean, we'll see. Meanwhile, Justine decides to manipulate AJ now into going to the ninja camp for her, and he agrees because, you know, well, he's, he's like, just desperate for human interaction. <laughs> Like, this whole movie, AJ has wanted to get with ladies, and every time Chuck Norris just steals the show. So if this is what it takes, AJ, you know, good luck, Godspeed. But as AJ and her leave the hotel, she gets hit with a poison dart and dies, which is terrible. But even though his employer is now dead, AJ still decides to go attack the ninja base by himself. A little bit later that evening, some ninjas attack Scott and Ara in the hotel. Hey, we've got a complaint about the noise. What's going on? I'm sorry about the noise, uh... We're newlyweds, and I, I guess we got a little carried away. All right. Oh, you smooth devil, you. So Scott and Ara pack up and head to Sakura's camp. He's like, denim shirt, uh, denim jacket, blue jeans. That's all I need. Sakura also can, like, sense that his brother's on his way to fight him, so he starts training. I want to make fun of this so badly, but I'm too afraid that he would kick my ass. So we're moving on. And while traveling, Scott and Ara make some whoopee together. And this transition is freaking hilarious. 
I laughed so hard. Like, we expect to see nipples, and, you know, the movie delivered nipples. AJ does make it to the camp, but he gets captured, like, immediately and just taken prisoner. Scott then gets to the camp and starts his assault. Dude, that's cold, man. You didn't even loot the body. But he gets in there and he starts kicking some major butt. And these ninjas are all mute or something. Because, again, there are so many problems could have been solved if they just speak to each other or, like, scream or something. But they don't. So he does take out a lot of them. Eventually, he is overwhelmed and he's led to a building called the Octagon, which is, well, it's the title of the movie. But it's also a building that has a bunch of bad guys in it and some obstacle courses because we all know ninjas love obstacle courses. And that is apparently true through multiple movies. Scott fights his way through and ends up fighting Sakura Super Ninja Kaio. And this fight is awesome. Actually, in Fighting Star Magazine, which, yes, that is a real magazine, this fight was ranked number 13 on the list of 25 greatest fights of all time. And I I could agree. It's pretty great. It's just so cool. But Scott does beat the Super Ninja, and Sakura's like, all right, you kill my guy, kill your guy. So he takes out AJ. Scott and Sakura then fight, but Sakura ultimately just, like, escapes the compound because I think he's getting beat. Meanwhile, Ara convinces some of her old classmates to rise up and burn the place to the ground. Fun fact here, it cost roughly 200 grand to blow this set up. And they did it this way because it was cheaper to blow it up than to disassemble and take the parts away. So they just exploded it and filmed it, and it makes for a really cool scene. And as the sun is rising, Sakura and Scott fight one last time. Sakura attempts to attack him from the back. But Scott gets him with his sword and stands over his body as the sun rises. And credits. Yeah, old movies have such a great way of ending the movie. There's no fluff scene. There's no day after talking about what we do next. Nah, kill the bad guy, mission accomplished, in the movie. And now, on to our favorite segment, Red Eye Reacts. Or it's the salt that keeps me from throwing up. I just, shh, just drink the drink. Hey, are you getting a drink too? No, 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 I don't drink. I don't drink. Come forward. Ah! <laughs> Very Dr. Evil of you. Would you like to come in? Uh, no, thanks. Chuck, buddy, I hate to point this out, but you are already inside. I think I'm looking in the right direction. I don't. Ouch. Um, excuse me, sir. Taco is always the answer. I know that's not what you said, but that's what I want to believe you said. There's some new men here. Come on, I gotta lick them over. Oh, sir, please don't lick anybody. I can't help you. You're gonna have to face your own responsibilities. Damn. Damn. You you can really feel the disappointment, and yeah, I, I can relate. Do not disturb me. We are playing Dungeons and Dragons. What a very calm way to drown somebody. All right, there we have it. That's all of it. Thank you so much for watching this. And thank you so much for recommending this. Recommend some more movies to me. I think next I want to watch The Little Ninja Dragon, which when I Googled it, it's just called Magic Kid Ninja Dragons. And the thing looks amazingly bad, but I'm really excited to watch it. So with that, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe if you haven't. Like the video, comment on some stuff, uh, hit the bell so you get reminded about new videos. Again, we're switching to just two videos a week, Saturdays and Wednesdays, starting now. So we will see you in the next one. And until that day, stay happy and stay healthy.